Hello folks, let's go ahead and take a look at Dialogflow once again. Uh, the previous video that I had, like, had this Yahoo weather API that it was using and fetching the weather based on the Yahoo weather API. The Yahoo weather API is now deprecated and does not work anymore. So what we're going to do here today is create another agent which is going to do something very simple which is to get the exchange rate between two currencies, right? If I had to type in USD to CAD, it's going to come back with the exchange rate between those two currencies. Uh, the API that I am using to get that exchange rate is here. Uh, here is an example I'm just going to call. You can actually call this API directly from, uh, it's a get method basically that you can call within your browser. If I replace a CAD with uh, INR, you'll see that it comes back with the exchange rate between those two currencies. So we're gonna go, so we're gonna go ahead and do the same with Dialogflow and let's get right into it. You saw it working already. Now I'm gonna go create another agent. Actually, I'm not gonna create an agent. I'll just pick up one of the existing agents and add a new intent to it. In case all of this is uh, too much for you, I might recommend that you go and look at the couple of other videos mentioned in the description, which are kind of slower to start with as far as dialogue flow goes, but I'll get right into it. Here is an agent called say number. I'm going to create an intent here called exchange rate. And in that intent, I'm going to put some training phrases. For now, I'm just going to add one training phrase called USD to INR. The minute I add that training phrase, Dialogflow automatically recognizes that there are two parameters here. Uh, both are currency names, so it names them as currency name and currency name one. So I'm going to save that again. Uh, down here, as far as the response goes, I'm going to add a static response here for now. This is your static response. I'm going to say save. Now when I go ahead and type USD to INR, it's going to come back with the static response. Now, instead of having the static response as a first step, let's have the response come from the webhook. What I'm going to do for that is I'm going to enable this inline webhook or inline editor, which is powered by Cloud Functions for Firebase. And in fact, I'm going to use Node.js here instead of Python as earlier, uh, just because we have this inline editor here, which makes it much easier if you know Node.js, uh, makes it easier for you to uh, use uh, Node.js since it's all in here and you don't need to host the webhook separately on some other server. Uh, you could still do it in Python or any other language of your preference. Uh, I'm just going to do it in Node.js for now. Python would not, I mean, cannot be in here. It would have to be on some other server. So let's go in here. And as a first step, uh, there seems to be some default code already in there. I'm just going to add one more mapping for the new intent that we created. We're going to call it uh, exchange rate. And here we're going to call this uh, set as This name that you give your exchange rate has to match with the name that you give for the intent. Uh, up there, the name that I had given was exchange rate. So before I save this, let me actually go ahead and create one function here. Just going to copy this over for now. Call it exchange rate and This is a reply from the web. Okay, and go ahead and deploy the same. So remember again, I created uh, the, here's the function definition and here I have a mapping for the function. Uh, exchange rate is the name of the function. This is the name of the intent. If you go up here, you will see that's the name of the intent, exchange rate. Now, after I went ahead and deployed, you'll see it'll go through a few steps here. And in fact, even after it says successfully deployed, it does take a few seconds for it to get implemented. I have the GitHub code, GitHub code available up here, which will which has the uh, 
code provided i'll put a url to this too and then i have the package.json also what's important here is this line i'll talk about that in a moment but uh, let's go see if that's deployed it's not yet done it's still doing it i'll give it a moment actually i just realized i forgot one step let's see if that fixes it i go in here to exchange rate and i need to make sure that i have gone to the fulfillment here and enable the fulfillment so it's using the webhook to fulfill this intent let's see if it works now there you go i got the reply this is a reply from the webhook uh, so early it was my bad but it does take a little time just keep that in mind uh, at least the first time you do it now let's go to uh, the fulfillment again i'm gonna go to um, here's the code i've already copied it from github uh, the two main methods that are important here or the functions that are important here is this one what this method does is it extracts the parameters basically the currency one and currency two uh, which we had seen earlier in dialog flow so if i had to go here to exchange rate this is currency name one and currency uh, or currency name and currency name one which is what i'm extracting here and putting it into these two variables currency one and currency two I'm constructing the URL to pass on uh, to exchange rates API.io as you had seen earlier here so that I can call the get method and get the exchange rate. I'm constructing that URL and making a call to get rate URL method here. Uh, the get rate URL method um, creates or you know actually calls Axios. Uh, creates a constant for Axios and uh, makes a call to uh, this particular URL that you are seeing here, uh, the URL that I construct or as an example, this one here. Now, uh, one other thing you want to keep in mind is you need to go to fulfillment and go to package.json and make sure that you have, let me go back one step, Go to package.json and you put make sure that you take in axios add that as one of the dependencies so i'm going to add that put a comma here without forgetting what else do we need i need to go back in here go to index.js actually that code is already copied here so i'm just going to take this guy from here take this guy replace the previous exchange rate method that I had with this new method and also put in uh, what is that the get rate method which actually makes the call to the actual uh, API let's do that and I'm gonna hit on deploy once again let's make sure that the package.json has the axios yeah it has that dependency uh, now again it's going to go through the same cycle this time it will take a little less time probably a few seconds but it will you know keep in mind that even after it is done it's going to uh, take a few seconds before you can change see the change in effect now it says successfully deployed let's see if it works yet usd to inr so i'm seeing that uh, still it comes back and gives me the previous reply uh, there is an option here to go look at the logs in firebase so i click on that once i click on that it uh, takes me automatically to logs i believe it goes to functions here and within functions you could uh, click on logs I'm going to close. Oh, this is already by default. I think it comes in ascending order. I'm going to change it to descending so I can see the latest message here. And I'm seeing an error here or a message here that says billing account not configured. So external network is not accessible. Now I'm trying to access the external network from within here, which is uh, I'm trying to make a call to that REST API and exchange rates API. So that's not working for some reason apparently some kind of a building needs to be enabled so let's go to console.cloud.google.com
and uh, what was the project called? It's called C number. So I'm gonna go to C. I think it's one of these. Let's find out. There are two here, so let's find out which one it is. Just supposed to be an ID here. Here you go. There's here's a project ID 131 EB. So let me pick that up. 131 EB. Apparently, maybe the billing for this is not enabled. So I go here and then go look at the billing. It does not have a billing account associated to it. So I'm going to associate one of these billing accounts. Uh, at, at least the example that I'm doing here does not have really does not really cost you anything. So you could either sign up for a free account or even if it's a paid account, you just need to make sure you link it to that. Once I link it to that and go back and try, let's see if it works now. There you go. Now it comes back and gives me the exchange rate as 70 dot something. USD to Canadian. Again, here I have the exchange rate too. Uh, GBP to USD. Here's the exchange rate again. Uh, you just need to go ahead and give it some more training phrases if you want it to be trained more. I have a few examples here. How many INR is one USD or convert USD to Euro exchange rate between Euro and INR? Uh, what's the USD to INR exchange rate? Uh, you want to keep in mind that you correctly specify which is parameter one and which is parameter two. Here you will see this is uh, two and this is one. Here it's the other way. So just keep all those in mind depend depending on how you want your trading phrases. So yeah, uh, that gives you an example on how you could use the uh, REST API or you know the inline editor to make a call to an external API. Here it's a get method, but uh, you know using Axios you should e easily be able to make calls to post methods also if you need to. I'll later try and post the same for um, Python, but here for now you have uh, the same in Node.js. The benefit with Node.js would be that you know you don't have to worry about uh, having your uh, webhook hosted on some server and making it available to Dialogflow. You could rather just go in and use the inline editor. Again, a quick reminder: in package.json, you want to make sure you're including Axios. Uh, I'm going to put a URL, uh, put the URL to this GitHub repository here. The main methods that you want to keep in mind is for this example is exchange rate and get rate. And I have mentioned the mapping down here, exchange rate mapping. This name that you see here is supposed to be same as what you see in the intents here. Hope this video was helpful, folks. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I would appreciate if you take the time to give the video a thumbs up if it has helped you. Thank you very much and have a great rest of the day.